Matt Arda, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming. As you know, we are uh, permitted today in order to protest against the imprisonment of uh, 10 political prisoners, 10 Catalan political prisoners, eight of which are members of the legitimate government, and two, uh, the presidents of, of ANC and Omnium Cultural, which are uh, very... Uh, Sorry. You can louder? Okay. All right. So, thank you everyone for coming. Good afternoon. As you know, we are uh, uh, here today in order to protest against the imprisonment of uh, 10 political prisoners, each of which are members of the legitimate government of Catalonia, and two of which, the presidents of ANC and Omnium Cultural, are uh, the two most important grassroots organizations in Catalonia. So, it is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker of the day, Margaret who is a member of the Scottish Nationalist Parliament and former MP for Luther Glenn and Hamilton West. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, right, good. It's really good to be here today. and. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, being in uh, Catalonia for the independence referendum. I was an international visitor, an observer, and uh, my colleagues and I, we arrived in Barcelona on the 27th of September, so it gave myself and my colleagues um, some time to travel around Catalonia and uh, see what was happening in the other cities and the towns and the villages, because uh, I had never been to Catalonia before. This was my first time in Barcelona, so I had no preconceived ideas of what it was going to be like or what the people were going to be like. And I must admit that they were very friendly, they were very welcoming, and I think I left a wee bit of my heart in Catalonia when we actually left. So um, we wanted to see if in Barcelona there was um, support out with the city and there was, um, it clearly, clearly wasn't just Barcelona. Um, we spoke to people in cafes, in shops, in street stalls, and we witnessed a strong yes vote. However, what was clear was that the no side wasn't actually campaigning. Uh, all they were doing was uh, pulling down posters and banners, which uh, was advertising the planned referendum. On the Saturday before the referendum, we visited various polling stations on the Saturday before and we found teachers and parents and students at the schools that were going to be used as polling stations and they were there to protect the schools because there had been word that the police was maybe going to turn up and close them all and they wouldn't be able to be used the following day for polling stations. Now, rather than them being glum, they all turned it into a great festa and they were all having food together and the children were playing games and, and sports so they, they obviously had been put in a layer and while we were there it all went well so um, we went to bed early that night because we had an early start the following day 5.45 a.m. we wanted to be there because again we had heard that the police might be turning up at 6 o'clock in the morning to close down the polling stations and we wanted to be there to make sure that didn't happen. So when we got there, there was already hundreds of people standing outside. And when we got inside, we met a lot of people who had been there overnight, staying in the polling stations to protect the polling stations from being closed by the police. Some of them students that weren't of age, they couldn't even vote themselves. Now, the events of the 1st of October were clearly, clearly documented. We had police violence, we had proxy servers shut down and we had ballot boxes confiscated. I was lucky.
forever. Never once did I think that we would have political prisoners in Spain in the year 2017. I have to add that I'm disappointed in the response by Amnesty Spain. Yes. They are calling for the release of the two Geordies. However, they do not consider the Catalan government ministers prisoners of conscience because, in their words, they are accused of acts that may constitute a criminal offence. We all know that to be untrue. And in my opinion, they are disregarding the human rights abuses carried out against these government ministers, which need investigating and investigating now. Many, many of you will have heard of Liz Castro. And on Twitter the other day, she put out a tweet asking everybody to write to the Catalan political prisoners. She said that until they are released, we can play their part in keeping their spirits up. But apart from that, the more letters they receive, the greater the pressure is on the Spanish government. So I urge all of you to, to do that. And if you look at her Twitter feed, the addresses are there. And finishing, friends, when Scotland has another independence referendum, all of us, whether part of a political party or none, must find ourselves the raw passion and the determination that the Catalan people exhibit in spades, or we will find ourselves crushed by all of those that would wish to deny us a vote on the future of Scotland. We cannot and must not allow that to happen. We must learn how to organise and mobilise ourselves effectively as a movement. We have a lot to learn from Catalonia. The people of Scotland and the people of Catalonia must have the opportunity to express their views and determine their own destiny. We must be ready. I, for one, will play my part. My question to all of you today is, will you play yours? Visca Catalonia, Sor Alba! Thank you very much, Margaret. So now we were expecting the speeches of Amer Anwar and Ryan on uh, Spear, but unfortunately they couldn't make it. So it is my pleasure to introduce now Jonathan Shafi, who is an activist and member of the Catalan Defense Committee. And after him, Angela will uh, speak for us as well. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. I'm not going to um, speak for long. I just want to make uh, a few points. Uh, the first is that the situation in Catalonia is a question uh, first and foremost for the people living in Catalonia, but it's not only a question for the Catalan people, it's a question for the whole of Europe, because the outcome of what happens in Catalonia is concrete. Either it will be a victory for Spanish nationalism and for authoritarianism, or it will be a victory for civil rights, democracy and people power. That will be the outcome, and that outcome will determine not just the future in Catalonia and across Spain, but will determine and help to determine the next phases of the European Union and of Europe in general. Because Europe just now is the site of a battle between authoritarianism, between hard-right nationalism, and those forces who are in favour of popular sovereignty and democracy. And Catalonia just now is at the centre of that battle. It is at the epicentre of the battle of ideas that are taking place right now across Europe. And that's why it's so vital that we have a European-wide response that stands shoulder to shoulder with the people of Catalonia, that says we're not going to stand by and watch a state under the impulses of Franco implement a regime of repression, a regime of attacking democratic and civil rights. And we're also going to say that we're not going to be silent when the major European institutions fail to stand on the right side of history. We're not going to be silent when it comes to the question of the European Commission. We're not going to be silent when it comes to Theresa May. We're not going to be silent when it comes 
to each one of these governments who claims to stand on the side of democracy, but when it comes down to it, stands for its opposite. What does that mean for us here in Scotland? Well, today there's been a demonstration in Edinburgh, there's been a rally and a demonstration here today, but we need to build a permanent campaign of solidarity with Catalonia. We need to build a permanent campaign that is open, that is able to manifest itself in demonstrations like this, but which is also able to start to build roots into civil society in Scotland and to twin them with civil society and the emerging civil society in the Republic of Catalonia. And so the Catalan Defence Committee has been set up with this aim and with this objective, very simply to say that if you stand on the side of self-determination, if you stand on the side of democracy, then you can sign up, you can become involved, and you can start to take action on delivering solidarity to Catalonia. Over the next number of weeks and number of months, we'll be having open meetings, organising meetings, public meetings to raise awareness and education. We'll be working hand in hand with the ANC, who have organised this demonstration today and have a, a meeting later on this month. We need to build the biggest, broadest solidarity movement in Scotland. And actually, we've got a good tradition of doing this. When it came to the anti-apartheid movement, when it comes to solidarity with the Palestinians, Scotland has a proud tradition of standing with the oppressed, a proud tradition of standing against oppression. And it's in that vein, it's in that history, it's part of that tradition that we stand here today with the people of Catalonia. And so I'll just end on this because I know there's other speeches, but just to say that when I started with putting Catalonia as part of a broader context in what's taking place in Europe, I think it's so vital because each and every turn that takes place now in the crisis that's taking place in Europe, the social crisis, the economic crisis, the political crisis, will have an impact on what the future looks like. And nowhere can that be said more than in Catalonia just now. It's not just a question for independence. It's not just the political terrain of those who support independence for Scotland. It has to be the political terrain. It has to be the political movement of everyone who wants to see a democratic Europe, of everyone who wants to stand against oppression. And so when we say we want to build a broad movement, we want to move a mo build a movement that moves even beyond independence supporters in Scotland towards people who maybe don't even support independence but who understand the need for an international movement of solidarity at this time. So, in conclusion, thank you for today's demonstration. We want to work closely with the ANC. There will be meetings announced. There will be organising meetings announced. You can go to CatalanDefence.org and sign up and you will get information about how we're going to take the campaign forward. But that will be one of many campaigns, one of many organisations who together are united with one goal and with one purpose, to show solidarity with the Catalan people and in doing so, start to build the foundations for a new Europe. Thank you. Europe 
from Bear Europe, the Dusty Drown refugees, the Dusty Indoor State repression. So I'm here today to say that whatever we can do in terms of solidarity, we have to. It's not just for Catalonia. Clearly here, when it comes to Catalonia and independence, we draw the parallel to our own struggle for independence. But I'd like to endorse what other speakers have said. You don't need to be in support of independence to absolutely condemn the repression, the violence and the brutality of a state that is taking people back to the fears of fascism in Franco. So when we stand and we say Visca Catalonia, we're saying it for everybody. And when we say no passaran, we mean it in a real sense. We mean it in our own streets and in the streets of Barcelona and the streets right across Europe. So sign up for the Catalan Defence Committee petition. We need to do that. Talk to people who might not have been in favour of independence, but are looking insane when they see raised bands and bloodied heads for voting, when they see elected reps in prison. They know that's wrong, and we need to mobilise every voice against that. Um, just do it, keep doing what you're doing. I'm hoping our union branch, will be able, our union will be able to discuss Catalonia, taking it out to wider civic society. We need to have that discussion. And um, there's a meeting that I've been given a relief really for on the 26th, where we're going to be fortunate to have one of the independent campaigners from Catalonia coming here. So again, more dialogue on the 26th of November in Glasgow. But basically, Vista Catalonia, no passer on, and power to the people fighting for democracy. Thank you. Thanks again to all the speakers of the afternoon. Now, so now, uh, please. So now, please, uh, if you will, we would like to take a picture of all of us. So we should uh, be in front of the Wellington statue. So if you just like here, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got Jonathan and Angel as well. If you want. I would like the three speakers, you know, you, Margaret, and Jonathan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I spoke to Jonathan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, while we prepare for the yeah. Before we go, guys, three quick thing. Apologies to Christy Moore and George Strummer. But no apologies to British Labour. Because some years before I saw the light of morning, the comradeship of Labour was made with true ideals and values strong. They were going to put the right wing right. They were going to right all the wrongs. And some of them did some wonderful things, world and famous institutions and caring, with true ideals and values strong. They flew the red flag, they sang the red flag, they had a people's party singing people's songs. Viva la Quinta Brigada, no passaran the pledge they proudly made, as they saluted their socialist forefathers, paid tribute to the sacrifices of the international brigades. Well, now's your chance, self-appointed guardians of the Labour movement's proud traditions. Do you hear the echoes of the days of 39? Now's your time to make a principled stand, now that Franco's spirit is on the rise. Where are you, Labour, sisters and brothers? Were you watching that state-sponsored violence? Where are you, who sang out brashly and bravely, now conspicuous by your contemptible silence? Where are those raised fists now, British Labour, at democracy in Europe being destroyed? Did you even raise a collective eyebrow, British Labour? Because we never heard you even raise your voice. Oh, a few dissenting individuals spoke up, but the many stayed resolutely mute. Didn't you want to condemn those shaming-headed Nazis resurrecting fascist beatings and salutes? Or did you decide when it all came down to it? that you have more affinity with Rajoy's People's Party. 
with slush fund, box B and parallel accountancy. Rahoy's establishment self-protectors <laughs> and common men and women at the grassroots of the communities. Was it when you ditched the red flag, defected to Thatcherism in your groves? Was it then you became shrinking violets who preferred to wave the new red rose? You'll stand by our allies, the Tories maintain, saying that they're good friends with the right-wing rulers of Spain. Well, no in money. It's the same language their predecessors used to condone and shelter Pinochet. So now today, tell us, party of the people, Labour, have you got anything to say? Viva, 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 viva,